So in this lesson what we're going to do is produce what's basically a house, so a 3D model which looks like a building. I'm going to bring in a whole load of different techniques to just show you how to build basic shapes. Um, that's the most general way of looking at it. Um, we're going to look at just drawing out a plan, extrusion, uh, follow me commands and warping images. So let's get started. So this guy here, we could keep him there if we're doing this freehand because it's good to have a bit of perspective. But as we know roughly the kind of thing we're looking for, we can just go ahead and delete him. So draw a box around him and press delete. Now, what we can do here is we need to draw the outline of the building. So camera, standard views, top. So that is going to be um, you know, the aerial view. There's different ways we could do this. Um, to start with, we can take a rectangle, so a tool, take it to the origin, click once, so hands free, move out somewhere, and we can do some dimensions. So, top of my head, we're going to make a small building. Um, let's make it um, I don't know, three meters wide and 10 meters long. So, if we type 3m, comma, 10m, and press return, what's happened is we've got three meters along and 10 meters up. I'll do it again. So, just delete this. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of this video, you can see this there. So, rectangle. 3m, 10m. M obviously is meters, but you must also put a comma, so 3m, comma, 10m. Right, 3 meters by 10 meters. And there we have it. Um, if we wanted it to be 3 meters this way, ten, um, sorry, 10 meters this way and 3 meters that way, you would just reverse it. So I'm going to add another section here. And again, click on the origin, move across. And I want this to be, I don't know, three meters by three meters, just a little bit coming out. 3m, comma, 3m. And then we have a rectangle. So we've already got a um, bit of a shape appearing here. So that's one way we can do this. Another way is we can take the pen tool, which is just there, click the origin, and you'll see that we can go any direction. Now, to make sure we know it's going where we want to, we've got these axes here, which are nice and helpful. So with the pen just resting on the green axis, so we know it's going to go in the right direction, um, I'm going to type 10m, press return. So that's gone 10 meters in that direction. Moving out to the side, you'll see it goes red, which means that we're going along the red axis, which is that way, so 3m. Down, let's go down 3m again. Let's go out 3m, down 3m, in 3 meters again. It's just making a nice round. Um, I can carry on doing this different ways. And to finish off, I can just take this down and click, snaps onto the red axis, click, and then tick home. So by clicking on the origin, it fills everything in. And I'm going to just do this one more time, but with um, the rectangles again. So just uh, three meters, comma ten meters, right, and then just stick something like that in. Now, the reason I just drew that to freehand was if I go for the orbit tool, you can see both of these have absolutely no thickness. They are two-dimensional shapes, so they kind of exist but not exist because they are they have no thickness, not even one millimeter. Um, the reason why I showed you this is that this one here on the left, this was created by drawing the outside pattern, so you have just the boundaries and that's it, it's one shape. Whereas this one here is two shapes. So I can click on there and you can see it changes colour, click away, click on this other part, and there it is. I can make this into one shape, because obviously if I take the push-pull 
thing. That just comes up as one, whereas here I end up with two. So it's not very useful. So undoing that. By the way, that was um, Command Z. You can just go here. So with the uh, selection tool, I can just select that line and then press delete. What has, that means is that the two shapes have now become one, they've merged into one shape. I can take the push pull command and that all comes up as one. The other way of doing that is the eraser tool, which is really cool. You just uh, hold down the left mouse button, keeping it held down, you sway it over and it goes. You can just hover it over, select, and it removes lines. Now you've got to be careful with this because if you are not careful, you can end up deleting part of your model. So I'm just going to run this over. You can see lines are turning blue, they've been selected, and whoops, I've deleted most of my model. For this case, it doesn't matter because that was a demonstration part, but that's the, what it is. So it's good to actually practice using this tool as it's a very useful tool to do. And it can be easier than just selecting individual lines and pressing delete, but either way. So here we have our, our rough building, whatever you want to call it. Um, we've got a shape, we use the push-pull command. And if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that as I move this up and down, the value changes. So it starts with a zero and moves into whatever. So I want to make this, I don't know, I think five meters high sounds about right. So five M. There we are. So if I was to take this and pull down and say minus one M, okay, that's minus one in the other direction. So if I pull it down and go one M, it's one direction down. It can be a bit complex with this and you've got to be aware where the mouse is going and various bits. Um, but the more you play with it, the more you get used to it, the easier it becomes. But the easy way to do it is to make sure you're right for the first time. So just take this, five meters. Great. So there we have, looks like a, sort of like a T really. So that doesn't look much like a building. We want to make it into something which is interesting. So take our pen tool, and if we just snap it onto the edge here, you'll see at the midpoint, it changes to a different color and snaps to the midpoint. I know that if I click here, that is in the middle. And just moving my mouse to the right, it's snapping along this green axis, which is off in distance there. And I keep going and keep going until it snaps onto the midpoint of the other side. Now, I can move left and right, and you see that I get a different line there, but I want midpoint, so there. Do the same here, so midpoint on the red axis, all the way, and see what happens here is we're not going for a midpoint on this line because the midpoint is somewhere around there. It, just, it will snap to it, but we're looking for a tangent, and when it's exactly 90 degrees, it'll go red, so click. There is, um, if you follow this along, it will make sense very quickly. Now, when you're pulling something up, it deforms on certain ways. So we want to have lines, so there's a line there. Just click from one origin to the other origin. So what I've done is I've drawn on the top what looks like a roof from above. If you think about going above a building and looking down, you'd see this. Obviously, it's got no dimension to it, but that's okay. So what I do is I select one, select two, select three lines, okay? These would be the top points of the roof. I select the move tool. Okay. I select the end point of this line and move my mouse up. And it's snapping, you see there, on the blue? It's snapping to the blue vertical axis. And I can take this to wherever I like. Now, again, bottom right, you can see where it's going to. I think two meters looks quite nice, so actually no, I'm gonna go for one and a half meters, so 1.5 M, press enter, and there we have it, we've deformed our roof. Now, if you don't have these two lines here, so that one there, and that one there, it won't work because it needs bits to deform along. 
but we've just added a roof. That's quite nice. Now, I want to add some more things to this building, so let's think about adding a lip around the outside. So, very easily done. Let's do it here. So, on that point corner there, I move it out, and I want this lip to be about, look, that's 20, cent 20 centimeters. Yeah, that'll do for me. So 20 centimeters. Press enter. Now this part can be a bit tricky. Just move your mouse up. It goes blue, so you know it's going upwards. And let's go for half meter, 50 centimeters. So 50 cm. Press return. So you will take any unit's measurement you can, you want. So you have some bits with inches, some bits with feet, some bits with meters, some in centimeters, some millimeters. It doesn't matter, the software will work it out for you. Now, I only think in metric. I don't actually know that much about Imperial. So I use meters and centimeters. But whatever you like, it's fine. Anyway, so I'll carry on here. You see that move mouse to the right, it goes green. So I'll take it along until it snaps onto the edge of the building. And there we have it. We've got a two-dimensional shape there. So I want this to go around the building. There's two ways I can do this. The first one, well, they both use the follow me command, by the way. The follow me command is just there. It's called follow me. If I click that, then you'll see you've got to choose a face. So I'm going to choose that face. And as I drag it along the edge, if I spin around here, you'll see it follows it. Okay. If I click, then you see here that it's created an extrusion along that line. Do it again. So follow me, choose a face, which is that face there. And I can just move around. Now when you get to a corner, just carry on there. So I'm going to zoom me out, use my mouse, zooming in, around the corner, zoom me out, orbiting around. Okay. And I can just carry on snaking it around the building, moving around, but as you imagine, this is not the easiest way to do it. I'm having to concentrate here with what I'm doing. Now when I get here, I don't want to go there, I want to just stop. So I'm going to stop just there. Okay, that, that's not very good. I mean, you can see that even with experience, it's not quite at the edge there. It's not the easiest thing to do. It looks pretty, but it's not really what I want. So I'm going to undo that. So edit, undo. There's a much easier way of doing it. Um, for this, I'm going to turn the building upside down. So orbit it in right round until I can see its base. Now, you could alternatively use camera angles standard. But I quite like just orbiting. Anyway, so I want to go around this shape here. So click one, it's selected, it goes blue. Hold down shift and select all the lines of the path. Now if you select something like the face and you don't want it selected, keep holding on down shift, left click it, it'll disappear. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've now selected my chain. It's quite nice. Click follow me, select the face. And there it is, automatically, it's gone all the way around. And that's exactly to the point. So that's incredibly fast, very easy, and very powerful. Now, the reason why you might want to use this is if you've got a complex shape. And it's gonna do an example to the side here. So let's take the pen tool and just do something, I don't know, something like that. Right, um, let's see if this works. Uh, let's draw a shape. Okay. Um, you can use the follow me command to just jump around here. Yep. There we are. So I just drew this randomly in the air using the pen command. 
if you can't quite do something like this, don't worry, it's not part of the skills now, we will cover that later on. But just randomly drawing, you know, I've created a bit of sculpture by, you know, just following the area. But don't worry about that, all you need to do for now is be able to create this follow me path on the house. So, now that's done, I want to add a door, some stairs. And obviously this building is just a make-believe building. Um, so what I can do is I can, I don't know, let's, I'm going to do this freehand. In later videos we'll come on to doing a bit more precise designs of items. But for now, I'm just going to check a door in that looks about, you know, looks about right. And I want to have some steps. And the step's going to be about something like this. Um, this is completely freehand. You can have things looking any way you like. Um, if it's not even, it doesn't matter. We'll come on to doing evenness at, evenness at another date. So let's just go... Oops. Yeah, we'll be careful with um, drawing this. Sometimes you... Cannot draw on the face, so let's do it again quickly. It's on the green line, and the blue line. There we are. And we've drawn this again like we're looking straight on. So if we go camera, it's on the views front. Obviously, that's a different um, uh, back, and the views left, some the views right. So Front, top, back, left, right is relative to the model environment, the environment you're building in, not relative to what you've just drawn. So you might have, end up the front of the building being on the right of the environment, if that makes sense. Again, the more you play with this, the easier it becomes to understand. Anyway, so we've drawn what looks like the front steps and the door. So I'm going to take the command and just pull this out. And we see we've got some steps. And I'm going to pull this out. We've got a bit of a door frame. Okay, so that is the basic item. So we've now created what looks a bit like a building, and we have drawn it, the foot plan with measurements. We just made them up, but you can have precise measurements for natural design. We um, pulled out into physical shape, we warped the top to create the roof, and then we created this gutter, or this chamfer around the outside, so that we created a shape. So these are some fundamental skills of any kind of buildings. Now, when you're using SketchUp, it's a bit like playing with Lego, in that you've got lots of small things, which on their own are not that interesting but you can start using them in different ways, you can start remixing them, and by the end of it, you can produce really complex things from very simple components. So even though this building is very simplistic compared to what can be created, these are fundamental tools to use over and over again. So getting comfortable with using them, getting fluent at using them, and knowing how to control them well is great. And also, as we showed here, sometimes you will draw on the wrong axis, and that's absolutely fine, you just undo it and make sure you draw on the right axis. The better you become at it, the less that happens and the more precise you become. So, have a go with creating a building like this of whatever dimension you like. Make it bigger, make it smaller, make it more complex and just enjoy.